Hello and welcome to Millennial Media. On this show, I sit down and talk with some talented students from St. Charles County Area High Schools. These students display their skills in the fields of fashion, graphic design, video creation, 2D art, and so much more. So stick around. Today I have some students and their teacher from Francis Howell High School. Hi, my name is Romero Starks and I am your host. So with me today is faculty member from Francis Howell High School, Sam Berenson. Sam, how are you? Oh, I'm doing very well. Glad to be here. Nice to have you. Thank you. So, Sam, just to get a bit of a background, how long have you been teaching? So, this is my 23rd year teaching. Mm -hmm. I, I love my job. I get up every morning, my feet hit the floor, and I'm ready to go work with these young people. Gotcha. So, what made you decide to get into teaching? My mother's a teacher, so I'm always interested in All right. All right. Well, uh, knowing. I, exactly. My mother's a teacher as well. Ah, okay. uh, my grandmother's a teacher. And, oh, wow. And uh, I actually went to college to do science research and just decided, mm -hmm. ah, I want to be with people. And it just seemed like a natural fit to, to teach high school science. Man. Yeah, my mom always tries to say, oh, you should consider <laughs> substitute teaching. And so kudos to you well, as well you. as all the thank teachers you. that yeah, can handle you. it. Thank you. I know it's probably a hard it, job it, at times. It can be at times. It can yeah. be at times. So you mentioned that you love your job. Yes. What is your current position at Francis Howell? So currently I teach biology and environmental science mm -hmm. um, and just, you know, enjoy getting together with those kids every day. The biology is younger kids, the environmental is, is the juniors and seniors. And I try to get them prepared to end up in college, mm -hmm. um, you know, ready to go in their next year or so. Um, and so every day is excitement. Gotcha. So initially, you weren't studying to be a teacher. You said you were doing science research, things like that. So what made you, what, what was the original plan with that degree? Sure, so the original plan was, I was gonna probably work in a lab somewhere, I don't know, maybe work for a big company. Um, per, perhaps down in the future, a college professor, I don't, you know, mm -hmm. I don't really know. I, I did just really enjoy being in the lab, really enjoy, right. enjoy doing that, that science research perspective. But I just decided, yeah, no, I really like to be with people. And, you know, I like to be surrounded with people. And uh, my students keep me young. You know, I don't feel mm -hmm. a day over. Well, I don't even want to say. But, um. <laughs> we'll keep it between those. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so what kind of things do you work on in those classes? Well, you can start with the younger kids. Sure, sure. So in, in biology, we focus a lot on um, biology systems. So um, cells, DNA. Um, we spend a great deal of time with ecology. Um, and biodiversity, those, you know, those are really probably my favorites, ecology right. and biodiversity. Um, the environmental, the juniors and seniors, we, uh, we look at water and water quality and air mm -hmm. air quality and have some very interesting you know, conversations and looks at what we're doing to the planet and the environment. Mm -hmm. um, and the class there, generally the, the way I try to run the class is I give them you know, a couple weeks of you know, traditional school, you know, here's what's going on, mm -hmm. and then let them choose, we have the luxury of time, what do you want to learn about about water quality? What do you want to learn about human populations? Gotcha. So then they get to do research on that, and you know, I kind of tell them I'm not an English teacher. I don't want to grade right. 70 <laughs> 10 page research papers, yeah. but you're going to do research in college. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to get you prepared for at least doing that. And so then we try to do something fun with that, something different than just writing a paper, like doing an infographic or just you know, any of the other types of activities rather than just writing a paper. Got you. So it sounds like there's a lot of individualism in the class. It's not just cookie cutter, we're all going to learn this. So you're willing to help the kids out in the field they really want to know about. Exactly, exactly. And I think that's part of the strength of the class. I mean, how many, how many people can say, I learned what I wanted to learn today? Yeah. Um, and you can't off, often until you're an adult. And you know, even then, we can't always yeah. learn what we want to learn today. Exactly. So you know, I, I think that's what makes the class work, and I think that's what keeps the kids interested, and I think that's what keeps me interested, because you know, the kids, are, they, they go off into areas that I never would have thought about. Got you. So then as far as the juniors and senior, mm -hmm. seniors, mm -hmm when it goes to environmental science. Yes, yes. What things are we looking at there? So, so e exactly, water quality, mm -hmm. um, it, you know, that was kind of what, what really that was, is the water quality and then the kids, you know, will do the research. We'll, we'll look at um, what, you know, what comprises good, good water quality. Um, we, we do solid and hazardous waste. We do a lot of uh, in-depth examination of our nuclear legacy in the St. Louis area, um, because Francis Howell is right next to Right, some very interesting yeah. nuclear history. Yeah, 
<laughs> and then, you know, with the Le West Lake landfill right next door and, mm -hmm. and Coldwater Creek. And so we kind of delve into those kind of issues. Um, and a lot of the kids will do things where they want to find out more about, you know, hey, what's it like to live in St. Charles County? What are some of the cancer rates? What are the things that mm -hmm. I'm faced with? Um, and some of the real issues they really can, can dig into. Right. So again, a lot of research then. Correct. And Correct. a lot of projects. Correct. So obviously, we're going to mention the videos at some yes. point. Yes. Yes. But what other types of projects have you had your students work on in these different fields? So, so I try to get them just to do a variety of different things. In in the past, we've done a podcast. Mm -hmm. um, we've done. Uh, I really like the infographic idea. Um, I've done a one-on-one -on -one interview with them, like they're you know going to do a job interview, and I just kind of ask them about some of the the you know what their research was. Mm -hmm. um, we've done. Uh, News stories, mm -hmm. you know, news articles. I was really involved at one time with a with a group through the University of Missouri St. Louis that looked at how students learn science through news. Gotcha. So the students wrote news articles. Um, just try to keep their writing a little shorter, um, so that they, you know, can immerse themselves in the research and not feel pressured by you know writing that paper. Right. So I imagine biology is something that all students have to yes. take as you know, young students. There's some things you have to take before you can get into electives. So is environmental science also one of those things you have to take, or is it an elective that just a lot of kids, the turnover rate, they end up being in it? It's, it's an elective, mm -hmm. right? So, and, and uh, you know, kind, of, kind of crazy, I'm the only one that teaches it at Francis House, so they right. know what they're getting into. If they're going to take environmental, they're going to get me. Yeah. Um, so I, I do. You, you, do the, you do the rigors of biology to get mm -hmm. them kind of ready for the for the next level uh, and and then we go from there yeah so right. so that I end up with you know about 60 70 80 kids a year to going through the environmental class depending Wow yeah so being the sole teacher how how much have have you enjoyed that experience to not only be able to teach these students on the younger levels as far as biology is concerned mm -hmm. but then get to expand on the things they learned when bringing them into environmental science. Yeah, and that's that's one of the real joys. Uh, particularly, particularly, I'm, I'm, you know, ecology is really what I'm interested in, mm -hmm. and and to see them do ecology, and we do a lot of stuff outdoors. We were just outside today. I don't know if I look windswept today or not, but we right. were outside today for for about four hours, um, just looking in the field at what's you know ecology, what's going on, and and what's living, you know, why is it here. Um, and looking for those relationships. So we do that a little bit in biology and then they get to build on it again mm -hmm. when they get to high school. So we've got gotcha. a fabulous, the Department of Conservation has a fabulous uh, textbook that we get to use and we just get to spend lots and lots of time outdoors. Got you. So let's get into the videos. Sure. How did those come about? So um, again, I was looking for something. The human population is was for me the mm -hmm. really most difficult, challenging course uh, part of the course to teach. I, I just didn't really ever care for it. Um, and I found online there was an organization that had a video contest. Um, it's called the World of Seven Billion, and so that was great. I said, okay, fantastic. Um, and so we turned our research into the film. I thought this, and it took us some time. It took me mm -hmm. some time. You know, I kind of dabbled in some amateur, you know, films. I take students on trips all around the world and mm -hmm. give them a film when we get back from those kind of things. And just kind of had this kid step through, you know, Windows Media Maker, uh, Movie Maker, mm -hmm. um, and and then the kids found a couple of online, you know, making cartoon kind of thing. Right. Um, but we stepped through all the process of doing the research and doing a storyboard and writing a you know writing the script and they could go through the whole process of creating that one minute film um, we did for that competition had a couple kids do real well with that competition and and last year the student said you know what mr. B this is great but we'd like to do something better mm -hmm. you know we'd like to do our own festival right and uh, okay well, let's go and, gotcha. and so the kids just, they took off and ran with it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the kids planned it. The kids did everything. And, and so that was just a fantastic group last year to just really get it off the ground. Uh, last year's winner, one of, one of your students here this year is Desiree what? Rudolph. So, oh, so okay. that's just really wonderful that uh, uh, we have that connection. Um, and so then this year, the, the kids, you know, they, they wasn't quite their idea, but mm -hmm. we kind of made parts of it their ideas and, and said, yeah, let's make this grow and, and let's go, 
you know, go and have this. So we had uh, we had popcorn and we had uh, pizza and and so you made know, a whole thing a, out yeah, of it. Yeah, made a huh? whole whole evening out of it. So gotcha. it really, it really was fun. So how many students did you have submit a video? So all the students do the research, and almost all of them made a video. Gotcha. <laughs> um, and so I think I had about 67 videos. Um, we watched the videos in class, and the students determined the top five from each hour. Mm -hmm. Um, and then those top 15 were shown on the big screen. Yeah. And so I let the and I, and I let the kids just do it. I mean, I gave them a separate grade, mm -hmm. but you know, what do you guys connect with? Mm -hmm. You know, what is important to you after going through this research process? What do you think is important? And whose film do you think really captivates you know your attention and um, really shows what it is that we're trying to to research and and want to portray then? Gotcha. And so then the students who didn't make it into the top 15, we had in a gallery walk outside along with some other, you know, festivity kind of, you know, fun. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So just quickly, we only have a couple of seconds sure. left. What, moving forward, would you like to put into these classes? So, so moving forward, actually, like with the film festival, mm -hmm. I'd like to see it go countywide, go further out, have other schools come in and compete with us. Got gotcha. you. Well, Sam, I appreciate you coming hey, by today. Thank you very much. It's nice talking. You have a great day. You too. All right. So when we come back, I look forward to speaking with some students. We have two seniors from Francis Howell that are here to talk about their special projects and some of the things they've been working on. So stay tuned. Take a look under your bed. Find stuff under there? What about jobs? No? Now try your closet. Still no jobs? Just more stuff? Well, you really have both. See, stuff is defined as household articles considered as a group. Sometimes this stuff is no longer needed. Wait, no longer needed? I can't be right. Because remember those jobs you were looking for? Those are really needed. And they're the stuff inside your stuff. Our job is to unlock those jobs. And it starts when you donate your stuff to your local Goodwill. Here's how we do it. When you donate to Goodwill, we sell your stuff to provide job training for people right here in your community. So just by teaming up with Goodwill, you help create jobs. And isn't that worth parting with the leftover guitar from your 80s cover band? Goodwill. Donate stuff, create jobs. They said I couldn't dream. Called me a piece of trash and swore that's all I'd ever be. Said a bottle couldn't see the ocean. Give up. Go back to the dumpster. But I didn't listen. I made my way. And now, I am what I've always wanted to be. Hello and welcome back to Millennial Media. With me now are seniors from Francis Howell High School, Jeffrey Seebeck and Zach Heck. Guys, how are you? Good. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Good. Good. I'm good. So, first and foremost, I want to get to know you guys a little bit. So tell me about yourselves, whoever wants to <clears> tackle <throat> it first. Well, uh, I go by Zachary sometimes, and my nickname is Zach. Uh, gotcha. When I get home, first thing I want to do is take a nap or eat some celery or carrots. Mm. I try to push myself to play music, even though sometimes I might feel a little bit declined not to, so I just get right into the move of it. Gotcha. I'm very musically inclined. That's a good way to say that. Uh, I sleep sometimes. I sleep a lot sometimes. Mm. That sounds good. It is I very mean. nice. <laughs> a healthy man that likes to sleep in his music. <laughs> very true. I like it. Jeff, how about yourself? Uh, well, I'm a wrestler. I've uh, been wrestling probably since I could walk. Wow. Uh, as of right now, I'm a big uh, big Fortnite guy after school. So It's not a bad thing. Actually, right Maybe. before I came, got a W. So <laughs> so that's, that's how my day's going today. But, yeah. I like it. So, guys, I want to talk a little bit about your interest. Obviously, as I talked to Sam, Biology is something you have to take. Mm -hmm. Environmental science, not so much. Mm -hmm. So what pushed you all to want to be in that class? Well, I am a big science person. I decided to wear the color green today just because I thought we were going over film festival videos. So I thought, like, hey, 
environmental science green. What the heck, why not? I like what you did there. Goes like with the it. last name too. I like it. And uh, I really enjoyed biology. It mm -hmm. was a really cool experience. I learned uh, a lot of different things about cells and cell splitting. Uh, and I really enjoy science, like I just said. And environmental science is something I really feel strong about. Mm -hmm. And I've seen Mr. Berenson, he used to have a really nice mustache at one point. That, very, that was really intriguing to gotcha. sign up for his class. I heard mixed reviews about him, but he's a really good teacher. And I've enjoyed pretty much every single thing that we've done so far gotcha. in his class. So you had science and mustache, <laughs> and you're like, I'm hooked. <laughs> yeah. Let me get in that class. I got you. So Jeff, what about yourself? Uh, so. When I was new to the school my freshman year, I'd gone to a private school for elementary and middle school. Mm -hmm. So, and my dad had actually gone to Francis Howell, and I had always heard about the, uh, the Weldon Spring nuclear site from him. So I thought that would be interesting because that class actually takes a, a, a decent look into how that all came about. So that was probably the big reason why I decided to take that class. Gotcha. So obviously when you're talking to Mr. Berenson, you talked about some <laughs> of the different projects and some of the different things you look at. If there was one thing that you could highlight in particular. What would you say was probably your favorite unit or favorite discussion topic? I would uh, probably have to say right now would be ecology. We recently just today went outside and uh, bush wildlife and there's a, a little lake nearby our high school called Lake Nine. Mm -hmm. And we go out there so far today. We uh, sat on the benches and Mr. Berenson talked to us as a class as a whole. And uh, we just all spread apart around the lake. And it's really neat there because there's uh, there's a pond and then there's also kind of like a grassy field environment and there's also lots of trees so you also get like the best of three worlds right there. Gotcha. And uh, Mr. Berenson was saying it, what we're going to be doing is just walking around the lake and absolutely doing nothing, being bored and that is the whole point of getting out there is to mm -hmm. enjoy it and first you have to be bored to enjoy it and that's very easy for me. Yeah. Uh, I really just love what we're doing so far and just today uh, you can find lots of different things out there, like uh, either small insects or some birds, not fish yet. Uh, you can find lots of trash and litter, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's a really nice sight to see out there. Gotcha. What about you, sir? So I actually enjoyed the water quality uh, segment portion of the, the class, just because I was interested in the, the Flint water crisis that right. was going on. So that really got me to look in more in depth into that and what was actually going on and what what was most causing that that out there. Gotcha. So, Mr. Berenson mentioned in biology and I assume environmental science as well. At a certain point, he gives students opportunities to say, "I want to learn about this." So, what was your pick of? You know what? All of this stuff sounds good, but I'm most interested in learning about this. I know you're a science lover, so that might be hard for you to narrow yeah, down. Yeah, I'll, I'll go one. for it. I like the population. Mm -hmm. um, I really didn't know much other than that we were growing really fast, but I didn't realize how fast we were growing. Um, when he said that our population, the world's population, is doubling about every 50 years, that, that really hit me. Mm -hmm. Because in our lifetime, the world is going to be overpopulated. Right. So that, that really hit me big on that one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you just asked uh, if we were to choose any topic in the science yeah. class, what would we choose? Yes. Uh, I don't really know if this would be a topic, but maybe different innovations that students can come up mm -hmm. uh, as ideas and share with the class for what would be a more sustainable option for our society today. Gotcha. Kind of just thought about that one. I think that would be a very good thing because I know that uh, we recently went over something about hydrogen uh, fuel mm -hmm. cells for cars and uh, what else was it? Uh, electric cars. Mm -hmm. and that's, Electric cars didn't last that long because of big oil companies pushing it away, subsiding it, and uh, same with hydrogen fuel cells. It was just upfront cost was way too expensive. Mm -hmm. So because that won't work uh, economically today, uh, I think that we should be able to come up with our own ideas as a class and see how far we can maybe push that into right. society. I don't think it'd, we'd go too far, but I think it'd be a good starting point. And that's where it starts is just one small thing, one small idea, and then eventually more people become aware of it and it starts to become a big idea. So you've piqued my interest just a little bit. So out of curiosity, are there any options that you personally have thought of, man, if somebody could really just get the cornerstone on this and get this moving, that would be great. So one idea that we talked about in class, which I thought was a really interesting idea, I know there's such thing as uh, solar panel cars. Mm -hmm. And I know those are cars with solar panels on them that get the electricity from solar rays that come down to Earth, uh, and yada, yada, yada. Right. Uh, I was thinking it'd be really interesting if we could, we talked about, not hydrogen fuel cells, but uh, having a gasoline tank 
but filled with water mm -hmm. and having a hydrogen engine. So uh, hydrogen is very, very flammable. It's a flammable gas. And if, let's say, a car crash was to occur, it would be a big, uh, like a big boom. Right. A big bada boom. And uh, <laughs> I feel like if we had a, like a gasoline tank just filled with water that fed the engine, uh, just small amounts of water that turned it into hydrogen that would convert it in, into the hydrogen that would uh, power the car itself. So if it was to get into a car crash, all it would leak is just water, not gasoline, or right. flammable gas wouldn't come out and make a big bada boom. Uh, and the other thing would be maybe adding wind turbines, a small little wind turbine in mm -hmm. some place on a car. I don't really know exactly where we could do that. But uh, that would be a really interesting thing to do. Uh, another thing would be, so nuclear fission or fusion, one of the two, it's uh, nuclear power plants, what they do to create energy. And uh, they bombard uh, uranium-235 with neutrons and they split and all this madness. And that uh, creates energy makes steam, spins a turbine, a steam turbine, something like that. And uh, then we're left with just this radiation waste that we're not really able to do anything with. And I know that we're able to harvest thermal energy, but I think a, what would be really interesting and maybe a good age for our new energy system would be harvesting radiation energy, like what emits yeah. from nuclear waste, which is radiation, not thermal energy. energy. Gotcha. So I know in the class, obviously, you all talk about population-related issues. Yes. Um, one of the videos that I watched mentioned, I think, food would be a problem within mm -hmm. our yeah. lifetime because of the population growth, and also, obviously, talking about things for women and, you know, the animals. So, Jeff, yours was about polar bears, mm -hmm. correct? So yeah. tell me about that. What made you decide that's the one you wanted to focus on? So mine was the effect on population and how it affects uh, like the Antarctic mm -hmm. and how that adversely affects polar bears. So mostly as the population grows, the more greenhouse gases we send up, which in, which in turn causes more climate change, which is the melting of the ice caps. So that's pretty much taking away their, their habitat, their whole environment. So, and they're already a threatened species. They're about to be endangered. Um, so I just thought it would be a good idea to see how we are affecting them as well. Got you. And Zach, I want you, Zachary, <laughs> Thank you. talk a little bit about your video. So my video was called Advancing in Women and Girls. And I felt like there needs to be a certain strong point within that subject. <clears throat> and the reason why, not really focusing so much on the United States, there, it has its little bits of problems, but I'll get back mm -hmm. to that. But uh, there's one main concern that's kind of a lost cause, unfortunately, would be in uh, the country India. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is because of underage marriage. It's like yeah. girls being married to uh, grown men practically, and their lives are just ran according to them. And it, it can be really brutal sometimes yeah. just to see the effects that it has on them. There's, I forget the term what it was called, but there's been just, it's awful. Yeah. Uh, if you do some research on it. And uh, the other thing was Africa. There is uh, women finding jobs in Africa isn't really the most easiest thing for them to do. And kind of like the second uh, thing that they can do is sell their bodies. And then, mm -hmm. you know, selling your body can be very unhealthy for your body. Yeah. And uh, it creates for them uh, a shorter lifespan because HIV is a problem down right. there. And uh, if they had more jobs sustainable down there, they could uh, pay for their families or any type of uh, financial issue that they have. <sighs> All right, and uh, getting back to U.S. problems, I would say maybe Amer uh, women in American government. Mm -hmm. uh, if you just look typically, you don't really see much women in government. Right. It's mostly just men. And I feel like if we had more women in government, there would be more acts or movements pushing more women in government and uh, maybe more environmental acts and laws being passed to help our sustainable earth. Gotcha. Well, we actually do have your video, so yeah. I'd like to take a look at it. All I right. thought it was pretty interesting, so we're going to go ahead and pull it up here. Advancement in women. If around the world women in society were given the opportunities, much like in the U.S. today, our planet would have the benefit of being sustainable as it was for billions of years. Problems? Whoa! Africa, India, U.S. have them. Financially, underage marriage, and few women in government. Six out of the ten of the world's poorest people are women. Economic disparities persist because much of the unpaid work within families falls on the shoulders of women. 
two-thirds of the world's illiterate adults are women. Lack of an education severely restricts a woman's access to information and opportunities. A short distance and a safe school needs to be assured. Increasing women and girls' educational attainment benefits both individuals and future generations. Better educated women participate more in the labor market, earn higher incomes, have fewer children, marry at a later age. All of these combined can help lift households, communities, and nations out of poverty. I thought that video was pretty eye-opening when I was watching it. Yeah. And what was really impressive to me um, is for a young man, for you to address those issues, a lot of the times when we hear about issues with women and some of the opportunities they have, it's from other women. And I feel like sometimes people don't take them as seriously because they think, oh, well, yeah. you're just a woman, so of course you'll stand up for it. So to me, it was very impressive that a young man like yourself <laughs> would take note of that being an issue. So one thing I do want to know is with these animation engines that you all use, how long did that take? Way too long. Uh, I know there's people that in the film festival that had, in my personal opinion, had a much better video than I did. And uh, that alone, maybe, that was about two or three nights in certain hours, uh, maybe maybe about eight hours total. Gotcha. It was, uh, I kind of didn't really plan it correctly. I, I went off the, the slides and the scenes first before I actually started uh, writing a script, just because that's how I am. I'm always uh, kind of like the artsy type of thing. I want to get that over with just because that, that's what piques my interest into that. But uh, Lots of hard hours sitting crisscross applesauce on my bed and just typing away, moving things on a mouse pad, right. which is really annoying and repetitious. <laughs> but uh, I eventually got it done. Gotcha. I was satisfied. So Jeff, before we take a look at yours, mm -hmm. how long did it take you? Was, can you relate to that experience? Uh, yeah, mine took me about two or three days, and I spent a lot of hours on it. Uh, not just making the video. The video only took me maybe an hour or two. Mm -hmm. It was just the research that went into it that took a lot of time. Gotcha. There wasn't much, much information on it yet, but uh, yeah, it, it was it was long. All right. Well, we might actually be able to take a look here with the okay. couple of minutes that we have left. Right. So, Jeff, let's All see. Right. So. Unfortunately, we're running out of time here, but both of you, I want to let you know I genuinely enjoyed your videos and I enjoyed the opportunity to talk with you. So best of luck in your future endeavors. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mario. Get in there. There you go. Well, I'd like to thank all of my guests for coming on the show today. And unfortunately, that is all the time that we have left for today's episode of Millennial Media. Be sure to look out for new episodes when we return in the fall.